Welcome Grognards to Second Front from Microprose. My name is Daz Tactic. Welcome to the channel. Um, thank you again if you've been sort of supporting the channel, whether it just be through likes and subscribes or whether you've been doing it through Patreon or through, uh, you know, buying the merch like, like this wonderful Daz Tactic t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, I do appreciate the support, guys. So thank you very much. Also, um, like if you do want to hang out at all, uh, just um, you can join my, my Discord, which is down in the description and also uh the, you can actually join me live on twitch i play a lot of different games on twitch and uh so uh, and i'll be playing this game on and off i think over the course of the next few years so if you are interested in this game then i will be covering this on and off at different times uh through the through its development and also i, I think that the game will just get better and better like it's actually very very polished at the moment and so it's it is going to be a, a really really cool game to um to actually sort of have in your library, I would think, if particularly if you like the sort of games that I like, you know, the sorts of games that I'm, I'm playing. This is one of my most anticipated games of 2023. Like I've got like a, I've got a fairly big list to be honest of games that I'm looking forward to, but this is, would have to be within the top five, I would think. It's uh, it's that good, and it really hasn't disappointed. Like I did play an early access ver or an early version of it last year. And I was impressed with what I saw. It it lacked a bit of polish at that point, but that was in early that was early times. Uh, this new version is looking very very cool. This is version one point zero point eight point two, which is about two weeks away from launch at this point in time. So this is going to come out just before the launch. Uh, this particular video, I will edit a lot of the fluff out of this video. So I'm just going to be going through scenario by scenario by scenario through the tutorials. Now, why am I doing that <laughs> instead of actually playing a scenario? The reason I'm going to actually, I was thinking about this, how do I show the scope of this game? And uh, because I think that if you wanted to get this game, there's so many different ways of playing it. There's so many different ways of approaching it. And there's so many different styles of scenarios. This is a World War II sandbox is the way that the game has been described. And uh, it's, um, it's a brilliant game. It's sort of like advanced squad leader type game, but with graphics. <laughs> and so it's sort of like, it's a, it's a war game underneath all of the actual the, the the really nice sort of almost like plasticine type uh, type um, you know 3D graphics underneath all that there's a really solid solid war game and um, so don't be put off by that um, like don't be put off by the graphics if you're wanting a, a hard level war game this is really really complex but also don't be put off by the complexity if you're wanting something that's reasonably simple because you can find that happy medium and I think the more the more you play it the more the game will reward you for your knowledge as you get knowledge of the game so I'm hoping that this video uh, which will really be a how to play second front uh, because I'm going to be going through the tutorials the tutorials are fantastic by the way they don't fluff around they really just go to the heart of the matter what you've got to do and how to do it but I'll just go through and explain what it's actually trying to impart the information it's going to impart sometimes you've got to play the tutorials through a few times to actually get the actual lesson so i'll just cut all of that learning out <laughs> and just give you the cheat sheets uh that, that will also then give you an idea of, of just the scope of the game and whether you think you may actually enjoy playing it so i hope that that's what this video actually does for you so anyway let's get into it i do want to show the um the workshop but i think i'll show that after we finish these tutorials because that will sorry not the workshop the garage this is where you'll have a look at the different armor there's a lot of armor in the game by the way i'll just maybe i'll just quickly show you that now and so um, you basically sort of go and click on like from from one faction to another. So, for example, if we go to German, we've got different tanks. We've got sort of like um, SP gun type things. So if I bring in like a, a tank, I can sort of just go back through, um, you know, so if I go for one of the one of the big uh, tanks, like we've got a, uh, a Panzer IV back and through here, F, F2. You can sort of just change the graphics. You can have it sort of with troops loaded in or, you know, or not, or, you know, rotating the different things. So this is really just more cosmetic, but it just it does look good. And through there, you've got all the different sorts of armor ratings across the tank, which I'll exp explain in the game uh, when we sort of get into it, but I won't, I won't show that one here. But if I then go across to, say, the Americans and then go and grab one of their tanks, let's just go and sort of see what we have in terms of, uh, say, a, um, it's one of their big, better tanks at the back end through here. Uh, it's say an M36. So if we bring an M36 tank in through this side, what we can then sort of see at range one, uh, these guys would be 
uh, you, the, you can see that the the American tank has certainly got the uh, the wood on the on the German tank. The German tank uh, struggles a little bit with the frontal armor, but not not so. Like they both do very very well against the uh, against the the turret, against the side, against the uh, the, the back of the turret, and the, against the rear armor in through there. If I start to ramp up the range, like at range two, it's about the same. Uh, three to six, it's about the same. Seven to eighteen, it's the same. We start to now sort of see a bit of a drop off there for the for the German uh, armor piercing shells. It's now gone down to sixty eight percent if it hits the, hitting the front at twenty five to thirty. It's still sixty eight. Uh, wow, the American tank is really pushing this forward at thirty at thirty one to thirty six. Does it ever drop? It doesn't ever drop. Wow. Okay, that's really really cool. That's really really good. Um, at uh, at at long at long range between forty three and fifty, it's only get, like we've got forty two. If it sort of if this is facing the front, it's still ninety seven percent behind. So there's a very strong chance to actually sort of get the kills. But you can you can start to sort of have a look and, and do your own research with that. So I won't go through how that works as such. Actually, maybe I've shown this now. I don't need to sort of show it. But it is very very cool the way it works. You've got all the different sorts of um, of equipment, like you know whether it's going to be some sort of anti aircraft gun. What the difference actually there is not. 27% chance to kill it there if we say, say at 19 to 24. This has got a slight chance to sort of kill the, the German tank in this instance. Uh, you've got different sorts of trucks, of course, which aren't going to do anything, uh, you know, anything back anyway. Um, small armored cars, there is a chance for it to kill it off, but it's very, very susceptible to being shot through there. Uh, armored personnel carriers back and through the sides. It's just a mountain and mountain of, um, of equipment that it's sort of modeled in the actual game itself and done like in this sort of, in this really nice style, this almost like plasticine type style, which I really, really like. It it belies the complexity. And so it's it makes the complexity not look complex at all, but it really is very, very complex. Anyway, let's just get out of that one. Um, we go back to the actual tutorials and we get started. So here we go, play tutorials, and we'll start with the infantry. We also have tutorials there for armor. And I'm gonna cut out and just go straight to the meat and potatoes. So in we go. So this first scenario is really just gonna be talking about the, I guess the phases and really sort of explaining how you can make the best use of the phases. It asks you to sacrifice this team um, with these, there's an unknown group in through the side. When you see question marks, uh, whether it be here or in here, it means that they're not really spotted from the enemy at this point in time. And so even ours mean that they're not actually spotted from the enemy. So we're actually hidden at this point in time. But they're probably aware of our, of our general location, but just not of our composition. And so what this one is going to go through is actually the, the actual phases that we sort of see through here, like move and fire phase. I'll explain all of this in just a minute, but let's go first of all through the user interface just very, very briefly. You have a show hints uh, area through here, which just explains actually how to sort of do this particular scenario. Uh, you've got like the... Um, I guess the player fatigue and ammo supply back and through the side as well, which won't really impact what we're doing in this particular version. Uh, back and through here is quite an interesting one. This is the F key as well. This is actually just going to show what your what your units can actually then go and see. Now, if I don't actually have that one selected, you'll see that my units, when I don't have anything selected, this is what we can see at this stage. The stuff that's this sort of darker green, we don't actually get to see that one. So anything in the gray means that it's sort of hidden from our from our forces. And so pressing F or pressing this button here to get the, the, um, the line of sight will actually be quite useful to sort of then sort of see, okay, well, what's gonna happen? If we go to there, for example, we're exposed to this particular uh, house with with full of the full of the german soldiers uh if we have a look at for example with them we can sort of see that really if we go to the objective we're going to get caught in the objective uh, straight away and so they can see the whole of the objective from both sides of it so going into there may not be a good idea so that's the that's the this is a really really handy tool i've got to say really handy so that's but a lot of these sort of games have those of course so it's not not um it's not dramatically uh, use, uh, no, it's not dramatically different to what you see in other games, but it is still a very, very useful tool. Here you can give up. This is actually really, really good. This is actually the help uh, file. And it doesn't actually have it outside of the actual game itself. It's got the different sorts of things, like for example, the different phases, which we're gonna go through back up through this side. It is worth reading through this because it's very, very simple. It really does explain things really quite well. And it also then sort of shows you the different sorts of icons that you're gonna then be seeing in the game itself. And also what the impact is. But again, it's not done 
where it's too verbose. It really just explains what's going on. So it is worth having a bit of a look at this. Uh, like if you've, you know, if you've got any sort of worries about what's what you're going to then do just open the help file up just go either to actions uh you know infantry what the different components are of the actual infantry what it means what happens when different things are actually going on it's simple like it just shows it graphically it doesn't go into too much explanation uh same with vehicles as well just the actual complexity of the actual vehicle cards what they all mean and how it then sort of operates. There was one little mistake I saw actually. Yeah, this one here is it's got 33%, but it says 17% chance for a quick reload. That's actually a 33% chance. That's the only mistake I've actually seen in the actual written information. <laughs> so that may be fixed by the time you actually um, you know get the game itself. But the help file is great. And as I say, it's just really simple, like the way it's presented. And it's presented with the same graphics that are used in the actual game itself. So as you start to play the game, you'll start to get a bit of a feel for the graphics. Uh, Gunfire and through here again, you'll sort of see the various, um, uh, these different icons will appear on the cards and in the results uh, with, with whatever you're actually doing. There's the results in through there explaining what, what these all actually do mean. Again, I'm not going to go through every single one of them. The terrain, you'll see through here, it's complex but simple at the same time. Like you've got like um, a hex without cover, you've got a, uh, essentially you've got clear, you've got ploughed fields, roads, walls. Uh, so good cover. Uh, you can see, see that it's got like two stone cover in through this particular uh, area. So uh, only when the fire is through the wall hex side. So as long as you're firing through the through the hex side or being fired at through the hex, you're going to get good cover. If you've just got a hedge, it's going to be poor cover. So just a single piece of cover. This will be in, your, in the results. Uh, then you've got sort of like uh, uh, bouquets, trenches, uh, bridges back in through this side. Um, Yep, so then you've got the um, squares, woods, etc., 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 all the way through different types of houses, uh, the different things that the houses are made out of, like wooden buildings, stone buildings, like, you know, the wooden buildings have got good cover, uh, stone buildings have got excellent cover, and so we'll see that most of these will be stone buildings, I would think, uh, when we have a look back in there. But it just goes on and on and on. But it, there's not too much. So if you're building a scenario, you've got all these different things uh accessible to you to then be able to sort of then go and build including a, a rubble building so upper rubble uh, building levels cannot be entered so there is actually like a, a range of different things there's also like a very simple sort of keyboard layout as to what you can actually then go and do with the game itself and um it's it's just simple like the game is as i say it's it's complex but simple Anyway, let's just go and continue. I thought it's worth having a look at that because that's a really handy reference. One of the best I've seen actually with, you know, with it being super, super simple. Um, so if we go and have a look, this is actually an indicator. Sorry, this is the victory points and also basically what's going on, the victory goals. So what you need to then go and try to do, just go continue. Uh, this here will then change the actual map layout. So you see there through, through this one in through this side, when I hover over, there's like a little symbol over here that goes through the various terrain. And so when I hover over something, this has got brush with a stream and a valley running through it. Uh, even through here, we can see it's a stone building, so it gives like very, very good protection. Uh, it's got a victory location with 30 victory points. Now, the, vic the victory points are what we have to sort of try to get to. I'm going to be explaining a fair bit in this first episode, but I'll, I'll be rattling through the next, the next lot of them fairly quickly um, once we sort of do this. You got the temperature at the moment, so not that that really makes much difference. You've got the, uh, now this one here, you can cycle through the different floors or just press the tab. So the first one will then take off the off the, the roof. And so we can sort of zoom in and have a bit of a look to sort of see, okay, well, what's this one sort of showing us? We can see that there's a few squads of Germans in this particular building. Uh, we've got our, our guys as well. Uh, 30, still got the 30 victory points back in through this side. Uh, if we go back in and click the next one, now I don't think, don't think we sort of get to, there's nothing big on this particular map, it's all just one level. So we're just going back th down through the levels and then back up to the top again. I actually like it without the, without the roofs, you can sort of see a lot of what's going on. So let's just leave it off for now. Again, you can just do that one. This is just rotate. Q and E keys will do the same thing. It just rotates into the cardinal points. You can't sort of do like anything too tricky with that one through there. Uh, space is just going to give you a different sort of uh, view as to what's going on. You can sort of have a look down at the uh, at different angles. I um, don't think you can actually do much with that one actually. So once you're actually in that in that mode, you are just in that particular mode. I don't know if maybe we can do that space. 
oh yeah it does give us a bit of a um, bit of an ind indication through there it's more just for graphics i think it's not going to not going to be able to do much in terms of being able to move that one around so anyway that's the um, that's the interface i'll just um i'll just go and click that one left click Again, it just presents everything nice and simply. Uh, it's um, it doesn't take anything for granted. Now, this first one is to, is is asking you to sort of rush through by running, and just shows you the damage that then is then done. Let's just turn this one around the other. Actually, we'll turn it around the other way, so we're sort of facing in towards where the Germans are going to be firing. So if we get this unit and just do what it's actually asked us to do. So when we go across. The only thing we can do is run, and we're going to have no action points at the end of it. So we're going to be we can run into into here. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, actually run or walk to this location, which would actually be the smarter move. But the game is just trying to sort of show you what happens in this first phase. And so this is move and fire phase, but it's also reaction fire phase from the from the enemy. And so they're going to have a reaction fire from this location. Now we already saw that they can see this actual area. So let's just go back in. I just right click then left click, in they move, the Germans now see it, they then fire, they kill, break us, so we've actually got a whole lot of different things where we've been broken, pinned, uh, now they've been able to reload as well, so the, the heavy machine guns in through here, so we now can see what they've got, they've got veteran units with heavy machine guns, now I'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, the style of uh, how things actually work when we get into that phase of the actual tutorials, but at this stage they've actually been completely broken and pinned, so these are in a bad, bad way. Now the other thing we can do is to move this force up into this particular phase so let's go and do that this is what the actual lesson is here is to not move it into where they can actually have the reaction fire but just to move them up into this and just walk them in now the walking will still actually mean that they can only fire at half rate you can sort of see that this their actual firing has gone to half rate at this point in time but it doesn't matter because they can't see anything anyway so they're protected and nothing can see them so let's just go across the next phase so the move and fire phase is for the american forces so there's each side has got its own phase of what to do so the first one is is we get to move and fire if we can fire our guys are pinned so they can't actually fire at anything so next phase is the germans then have a firing phase so fire all units that can still uh, that uh, still can fire. Now the heavy machine guns we saw were reloaded, and so they're ready to fire. So they're ready to go in yet again. Um, and you can sort of see there the different sorts of results that came back through. Again, I won't go this through into too much detail, but there was quite a quite a high percentage chance with that with that result that they actually got to then do some damage. So we come back across. Are they going to fire? Yes, they are. Now they missed had a malfunction with their machine gun and so we've actually been able to stay in that location I oh, know they're escaping they're running but there's still one group in there and technically we've actually already won the scenario but it does show you the results the, the poor results we had with these guys now running away uh, we now have an advanced phase so the next one was to try to escape that was the escape phase where these actually ran away the last phase that we actually have is the advanced phase. So move infantry one hex. Enemy cannot fire at you. Uh, you can attempt moving into con enemy controlled hex to initiate close combat. In our instance, we just want to go and take the, the objective. Now they can't fire back. This is the key to this particular movement phase. So if you can move in the first phase into a position, whether it be walk or run or crawl, uh, they all have different things that they can do. You can either crawl, walk or run, depending on how far you're going. In this case, we can just, you know, but, but now we have an advance where we're sort of going in like a bit of an assault. So we're just gonna move into that particular location. We've still got the question marks here, which means that they haven't still haven't identified. An advance is actually a really, really powerful way to still keep your forces relatively well hidden if they are, if they, if they are hidden. You can see that our guys were discovered. There's no question mark near them. They were discovered and basically destroyed. So that's the advanced phase. Then we have the final thing in through here. We just have the close combat phase, which won't have anything. So melee phase with nothing. And then it's just the end of the turn and that should be the end of the scenario. There we are. Right, now in this scenario, what we've got is we've got a German soldier in through here. I'll just go in again, just click off the roof. 
So we've got like a, um, a commander just on his own in through this side who won't really be able to fire because they, they actually sort of enhance the other units around them. We've got another commander back over here, like a two star commander through, in through this side. It's, commanders give benefit or bonuses to movement and also to, uh, to actual firing as well. Uh, they'll go through that in a little bit of detail. Now we've got uh, two units in through here with the plus the commander. We actually have uh, two more units back in through this side. Now we can have a maximum of three units going through any particular area. So we can have three units plus a um, plus a commander. And so uh, in to get past there to actually do this assault, we can't do that with this particular group. What we can do though, is we can use all of the different units and have them run up. So we'll get them to run because we want to run past these. But how do we do that? It's very, very simple. We just move up. Now we know that we can't have a total of four plus a commander going through this particular phase. So we just go and unclick one of them in fact, if we, if, sorry, if I click, or if I click on the commander plus one of them, or if I just have all of them selected and then just right click, you can see there I've now got the commander plus the other one is selected, and it, they can then move out to here and continue their running. Uh, remember, this is the move and fire phase. If I have just infantry, and I'll just go and do that. Whoops. If I do that, it can only move to there. So uh, one one infantry can only sort of move to there. Put the commander in, we've got the extra two movement. So let's go and move that one to, across to there. So he's taken one infantry with him along with the commander and they're right now next to the actual location it actually is. Now we do actually have an option here to fire, but we don't need to um, because it, the, the commanders can't really fire back without actually having other units with them. And then we can grab this unit as well and it can still just keep on running, but it doesn't have the commander. So the commander is not getting the extra two benefit from that particular commander. Um, that's what we need to do in the, in the move and fire phase. So they, they've got nothing to fire back with. Now, if that was, if they actually had an infantry group in there, that would be extremely dangerous, but it's not escape phase, nothing happening. Uh, advanced phase, now we can move one extra move again. So now that after, after running, we can now move in, ambush the unit. We can see there, we've got like a, um, a very high percentage, 98% chance we're going to actually sort of kill off the the uh, the enemy. So we move in, and um, and then we also can move this one in as well. And so that's now going to be an assault. Just going in this one melee phase. They're just going to go and fire, uh, uh, like fight this one out. There we go. Ambush killed in action. Uh, we did have to do a, a roll, but we were fine, and we're in there now job done. Now the idea behind this particular one is literally just to sort of use your different forces and just see what happens when you're actually aiming with the different forces. So just to give a bit of an example, these are not moving at all. If I grab this particular unit, we've got a couple of different scenario, a couple of different targets we can actually hit. We've got a 92% chance of hitting this target and we've got a 58% chance of hitting this target. So what's going on in here? If we go and actually have a bit of a look at this one through this side, you'll see that the actual crosshairs in the right right next to it have got like uh, like two extra rings inside it. Whereas if this one in through here, it's only got like the one extra ring. And so the one ring is showing that this is actually at normal range. Like if we have a look at these ranges, the, ra the range of this unit is eight. And so each of these units has got a range of eight. They've got fully four, four action points, I guess, in terms of its firing, four fire capabilities for each actual unit. And, um, and so it's actually, and it's got, um, yeah, so, so the eight is the important thing. So anything between half its rating, two and half its rating, so four, so between two and four, it's going to have a normal shot. Beyond four, it's going to be a half shot, so half range. We'll see that as we come across the other side. So that one there is, is two away, so it's going to be 58%. At range one, it gets a, it gets a you can see there, I can't really sort of show this, or, or yes, I can. I can actually do it this way. And so this is fire adjacent. So we get better aiming because we're right next to it. So infantry have a bonus of two extra when they try to do this one. They've also then got their own various units in through here. When they combine all of these different ratings in through this side, we end up with a 92% chance. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to definitely get it. We just fire on it. There we go. We destroyed it. That one's done. We get a victory point for that one through there. So that's one of them done. This one here as well, same deal, 98%. And wrecked as well. I, I, I did do this one earlier and actually missed <laughs> with the 98%. Now we have a bit more of an interesting one through here. Again, we've got like the eight, the eight which means one, two, three, four. So this is at now at, at the medium range. So we can just go across and aim at that one. 
There we go. Actually, we actually got that one. Now we also have elite forces. I should have shown what this one actually can then go and do. Uh, do we have elites in through there? These are all regulars. We do actually have paratroopers. Now the paratroopers are going to be 58 as well. They're basically, this one's a little bit better at 48. These are, um, these are regulars with eight in through that side. Have a quick look at this one as well. That should be 58. No, so yeah, this one's a bit worse. There's only two units in this one. And this one's 58 as well. Yeah, so the 58% for both of these. These are just on the outside of the range, like just within the four. It's been immobilized, which doesn't really do anything. I'll just try this one as well. So the more units that you actually have, come on, we need a kill here. And we, oh, we, do, we only got immobilization. I don't know if that will actually work in terms of the victory points. So I think we've missed that one, essentially. We do actually have this one. If I had to move this one up, I might just show this. Uh, whether I run or walk, I can sort of walk into one of these sorts of locations. And um, this one's only got a range of six. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll just, I'll just walk and then shoot. The next scenario actually explains what this is all about anyway. So I can actually still shoot at this one, but it's only 28%. And when we hover over this one, we can see that we have a, a penalty of two because we moved and a penalty of another two because of the long range, because it's it's beyond half half our, our actual six distance. And so you can see through there, but these actually have like a lot of a lot of firepower. They actually have an eight anyway. So we're still getting we're still getting the four, but we're only getting the we're getting it a lot, a lot less because of the half range. So we've got a twenty eight percent chance, and we missed by the looks of things. Yep, that was a miss. All right, they've all fired. Um, then we've got these at long range. So we've got uh, these are all just regular units. Let's just go and have a bit of a look. So these are now just going to be showing at half range again. We've got range eight, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's beyond the halfway point, and also we, but we're not moved. We haven't moved, so we've got the full, the full gamut in through here. Let's just go and hit it. I hope this is making sense. Miss. Got it. Great. Got it. Okay, excellent. All right, now to get to the any of these here, we don't actually have, you can see there that we've got like areas that we just can't see beyond this ridge line, that we're, we're sort of down in this valley, and we don't, we're not seeing beyond this particular ridge line in through here. And so this one, we everyone has to move and fire. So we've got like a couple of different things in through this side, where I can, for example, move this one up. I can just see the walk or run. It's not gonna really make much difference. In fact, let's just do a run and then we'll do a walk for the next one, just so you can sort of see the difference in through here. If I then go across and actually go to fire on it, actually it does do one. The running was um, does make it a little bit worse. There we are, 28%. But we do actually have a commander in there and we still missed. This one here, I'm just gonna go and pick up. Now, if I walk into there, I think I can then just walk here. I can then get all of these units together. And we'll just walk up into this position. So we've only been walking, and now when we do it, we only have the negative two, but we've only got like we've got one less unit that was firing, so we're down to 17%. But we do get an extra shot there because of the commander. Uh, we've got a commander down through here with two. Now this means that he can actually they can run to that position. They have to get to there to be able to see these. Probably won't get any of these, but anyway. <laughs> so that's as far as they can go. 58%, 58% doesn't really matter that much. I'll go this way. Again, we can sort of see that we've got like a, a plus two because of the leader. We've got a negative one because of running and we've got a negative two because we actually moved. And so we only get like half of what we have, but these have got a range of 12. So let's just go across and hit this one. Missed again. Now these again, if we have a bit of a look, now we can I can move that one to there. Uh, where can you move to? You can move to there as well. Let's move all, let's combine these. Only 8%. And these have only got, like these don't actually have a good range anyway, actually. I didn't see what they actually had. Uh, these again, we've just got a couple of different commanders in through this side. We're going to have to run. Actually, we can, we can walk to there. These have got a range of eight. So these, these are going to be sort of like, whoops, he's going to be um, at long range, no matter what. But at least we can sort of just by walking, we're going to, we're going to be long range no matter what we do. 28%. We missed again. 
This one through here we're going to have to run. We've got nothing else we can really do. And we can't bring this. I could bring another one of these in. I might do that just so we get the, the commander bonus. And 17%, 17%. It's not fantastic. Missed again. God, we've done a bad, a bad run through here. We've got no victory points at all. And so running and gunning is not great. 3% on its own. And we missed. Okay. All right. Now, in this scenario, we're really looking at leadership and rallying forces and bringing them back. Now, the game does say that if you hover over, you can see what the results or what the odds will be of them rallying on their own. But it doesn't show that, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a bug at this stage. Again, I'd probably be ready by the time the game launches, I hope. It's not in there at the moment. Uh, but if we grab one of, the, one of the leaders and then move that one into there, so if we just go and do this, now we're in the move and fire phase. Back over through here, we have like a rally phase or actually this close combat. Where is the, where is the rally? So it's escape, advance. It might be this one here, the escape phase. All broken units will try to escape or, um, or get rallied, I think. So anyway, it may even be after all of this. Anyway, let's just continue on. So we're now just going to move that one up in there. And now as soon as I do it, we're going to see odds will then appear, but it doesn't appear at the moment. There we go, 92 and 83%. We just saw it as it was moving. It's the only time you get to see it. And I think that that's a bug because there's nowhere, nowhere else you can sort of see that anywhere else. Uh, so anyway, and we'll do the same through here. Just move that one up. And again, 92% for both of these different units. Uh, we'll just end our phase in through here. And they should do the rally. Now we have an advanced phase. Now we have to go up to here. So now that they've actually got these different units, we can still get them, but it's, I can't, still can't pick these up. So it's important that we don't do the movement. So I'm just going to go beyond that one. Melee phase into actually the end turn. It's a recovery phase. They've all rallied. Actually, one of them failed uh, through here. The veteran unit through there didn't actually make it, uh, but that's okay. We, we don't need to worry too much about that one. All right, uh, we'll now move. It's the fire phase for our side. We don't need it. Escape phase. We may still be able to rally it at the end of this other phase. And turn. And we're going to rally. Yes, we did. Okay, so then now everyone's actually rallied, and we're back now to the German phase where we have move and fire. So I'm now going to move these units up. I'm going to run them towards the objective because there's nothing else on the map. Just finish this one off. Now we can get into the valley, but we can't get uh, really beyond it. So move them up. All right, in phase. Advance. We'll now move them out of the out of this one and this one into the into the actual rail. Uh, area where we can sort of go into the valley the valley chews up movement when you're going back out of the valleys or up any slope actually also then chews up a bit of movement as well fire again we just have to move next to it and in the advanced phase we just go and take the objective there we go grab the objective 100 points for us thank you very much end our turn phase and done by the way in that last um, last scenario it, the extra movement was provided by the commanders as well so the command like the one star commander gave one extra movement the two star gave two extra movements so that was actually an important part of it but now in this one here this is a really interesting one this is a great great one to get, get a bit of a feel for some of the nuance 
of what you can do. Now we've got an unknown unit in the top level of this of this uh, area. So he's in level three uh, of, of what we have. If we go to back to level two, we miss him at level one down the, through the bottom there. So this is an interesting one where we've got like a group of Germans in the in the top protecting this particular location. Now, the whole location is, uh, is is worth 80 victory points and we have to break in. This scenario is all about using concealment and actually sneaking up on the enemy. And so, and, and it's all about the question marks that we see through here. So all of our units haven't been spotted just yet. Now, if we go in and have a bit of a look to see what this unit can actually then go and see, if we go and press the F key, have a bit of a look. You can see pretty much everything except for this little area at the back through there. So I'm going to run this unit across to there just so I've got some fields of fire. Uh, he can see everything in through here as well. And so he does get to see into those, but we actually have full movement for the units that are, that are presented up front in through there. So let's now just start to uh, let's start to move these up. So this one here, we know that we can actually walk to that position and be safe. So let's go and do that. So he's now safe in behind the shadow of this particular building. These are all now, all, th all three of these are in a position where they need to start to, to, to res respond. I'm going to, you can see I can either run, walk or crawl. Now with the question mark, if I walk or run, we're going to be spotted and we're going to be identified. And we don't want that. Like this one, you can see the question mark is now gone. It's been identified by this unit. It's can't still, it still can't see it but it can, it knows what it is. And the question marks are really worth an awful lot. Now, I've got a commander through here as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna crawl these into here. And even though they can see this area, we crawl in, they can't really identify us. So we've still got the question mark above us. And this is powerful. This is actually quite an important principle of the game. I'm gonna crawl this one in on top of that one. So we now have two regular units back in through there. I don't wanna fire because that will then expose who I am. And the whole idea of this one is to actually use concealment all the way up and then do an assault on that particular unit. I'm also gonna crawl this one into this location um, and uh, just have that one crawl into there. Now that one did get shot at, but it's it's still concealed. It doesn't it like it was just sort of like a, a vague sort of shot. Now I still don't want this one to go and do too much, so I'm just going to go and move this one across. <coughs> we know that we've got full concealment everywhere else in through here. Let's just move that one across, and I'm going to move the commander back into where I had the two different units back in through here. Now I'm going to have to just walk this commander in, so he's actually not concealed but the other two units actually still are. So that's pretty much our turn, our move and fire. We don't want to be firing with these units. So I'll just go and end that one. They can still fire back. Now they'll probably still fire at this unit again, or will they? Maybe not, because they really don't know what's there. So it's now the escape phase. They're just sitting there. They're lying down, sort of covering what they can. But we still got a lot of, there's a lot of unknowns in through this side. Now what we want to do is we want to go through this area through full concealment. Now, if I try to try to sneak out into here, we're going to be spotted because this is clear. Now, to to just explain how that one then works, if we go across to terrain. Uh, you can see when we go across, we've got uh, hex without cover can be dangerous to move into. Plowed fields, a hex without cover. When we start to have a bit of a look and see what we've got, like we've got, um, what is that one? That's sort of like a bit of a garden or something. Uh, yeah, this is brush. No cover and provides hindrance at level uh, level line of sight. Does not block line of sight. It doesn't provide actual cover, but it 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 will sort of provide us. We can still sneak through it. Uh, and also, if we have a look at the graveyard, graveyard poor cover and provides hindrance to level line of sight. Does not block line of sight. So we still actually have this hindrance to level line of sight. So that's going to be okay. We can then just get our units, and if we Oh, now, so we're in the advanced phase. This is the advanced phase. We get a free move um, anywhere we like. And remember what we sort of said before, the advanced phase will keep these question marks on your unit. So all, all of these units are going to then move across. They've now all moved in and retained their question marks. This one as well. I'm going to move that one up. Get that one nice and close. And this one as well. Still got the question mark. So I retain the question mark through there. I am going to move this one into this location where we do actually have like some, it's only a wooden building. We've got two protection back in through there. All right, so that's going to be the end of our advance phase.
there's no melee. Now they're going to have their uh, move and fire phase next. This is going to be the German phase. And it's firing. It did miss. It has identified the commander, but it hasn't identified the others. So we've now got the uh, yeah, we've now got a fire phase again. The only one that's really been spotted is this unit back over here. So I will actually try to suppress it. Now it's only a three percent chance of actually getting the suppression. You can see through there trees uh, with no cover. Uh, so we've got high aim hindrance at two levels in through there, and also he's got a good cover with walls back in through this side. We are aiming at this particular shot. Uh, we have a range of eight, and it's one, two, three, four. So we are sort of right on the on the limits of, of getting like a reasonable shot, but it's still only three percent. But we might as well do it. It was a miss. There's a chance we can suppress it or pin it down. Uh, that's what we're going to do because the others are all hidden. We don't want to be exposing those. They're not going to advance anywhere. Now, this, the um, the victory points are going down in value with each one of these that we actually uh, don't do or that we get to do. Now we've got another crawl phase in through here, so I can actually go and sh I could try to shoot this one if I wanted to, but. Um, it would, it would finish off what we do, but the whole idea is to actually crawl into the actual building. Again, we've got question marks all the way through. They can't do much about it. Let's go and crawl into here as well. And so we're now starting to get close in on the actual on the, on the thing itself. It's very, very cool the way it does work. Now, if we move into here, I'm sort of almost tempted to do it so to show you what the difference actually is. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's go and crawl into this location. Actually, it has retained its uh, question mark. I didn't think it was going to. Uh, I can fire at that one, but I don't want to. This one here, I do want to fire again. Just try to suppress it. We did pin it this time. 3% chance. That's cool. That means it doesn't get a shot at any of our units. In which case, yeah, no, I won't do anything. I won't do anything. Um, yeah, can't do anything there anyway. Okay, so we'll now just go to um, the next one. Fire phase. Can't do anything because it's pinned. Oh, actually it did. It, it, just, it has a weak shot. Uh, when it tries to do this. Escape phase, advance phase. Now let's just you just move this actually we'll move it around the other way. Let's start to uh, to assault this. Now we can move into the bottom rung. So I'll just move in a little bit so you can sort of see this one. I can move into there as an assault, so we'll do that. We've still got the question marks, which is great. We can move into here as well. As an assault as well so i'll just bring that one across and even this one can then move in getting it close to uh, to assault the actual location itself this one here can uh, can't do anything i'll just leave that one where that is if i move into the woods it's not going to help me all that much it's going it, to just expose it more now we have a melee phase it's actually two levels up so we can't do anything there so we've crawled all the way through it's pretty cool the way it sort of does work. It's got its moving fire. It's now going against that unit. It, it missed that one. All right, now we've got the fire phase for us. Missed. Now I've got a 12% there. It's not fantastic. We can't see that one. This one here we can't see either. Now we're going to go to the assault phase and we'll now get to the level below it and get ready to actually then assault this particular, it's only a half group anyway that's actually in there. But we can sort of see it um, in through there. Now we're still, we still haven't captured it because we have to get rid of this one in through here. So we now actually have, actually sorry, we've got our move and fire phase. I'm now going to move up into here. So we've still got question marks. And now I've got a 29% chance. It's still firing at this particular unit all the time. 29%, uh, I think I'll still keep it back. Um, let's just crawl in. Crawl this one in as well. So we're, we're getting into the steeple now. <laughs> Missed. So 
It has a fire phase. It really can't sort of see too much. The advanced phase. Now we have our unit where we can now do the assault. So we can see through there, there's a, a chance when we do this one with the ambush that um, that like we should have a 90, 98% chance of actually destroying this thing in through here as well. So there shouldn't be really any big problems with this, um, with the ambush and the close combat. Either one of them will actually sort of then work. So let's just move up. So got the question marks. Move this group up as well. So they're ready. And uh, we'll end our phase there. Melee takes place. We should get the 60. Killed in action. Job done. <laughs> and we've taken the steeple and we've taken the objective. Right, in this scenario, this is all about machine guns or sort of like it's, it's a, it gets attached a bit like a commander, how a commander can sort of go into different units. Different units can actually have a machine gun. So for example, we've got Captain Garcia back in through this side and he's with an elite squad that's got very long range in through here uh, with a machine gun as well. And the machine gun has got a range of 32. So these can be quite, quite powerful. Now to see what all of these things actually mean with the machine gun, we've got all these different things that can actually happen with the machine gun. This is a heavy machine gun. You've got, you've got heavy machine guns. You've got uh, medium machine guns in through here. It's uh, a heavy, where's a light? got two mediums, two mediums in through there. We don't actually have any light machine guns in this particular group. And so there's different status with each of these as well. Like, so the machine gun, in fact, let's just do this through the help. I think this is so much easier to show this one through here. So the weapons themselves, you've got the range, which we can sort of see through here. This one's got a range of 20 down through this side. The actual weight is going to be two times. So it's not that heavy. The heavy machine guns are four, four times the weight, which sort of just increases the, like it slows people down. Uh, medium machine gun in through that side is just a designation. Again, 33% chance we're going to get an automatic reload, which means we're going to get it like a second shot, or the ability to shoot a second time. Uh, the percent chance for the gun to jam is 1% in through that side. And then we've got the actual firepower. Now these aren't great firepower through here at only four. Uh, then we have like the range, so it's going to be, our range is, is between 2 and, and 20. Uh, we've got, uh, sorry, that's for mortars. Actually, that's we've already done range, haven't we? We've already done all we need to do. That's it. Then we've got two designations in through this side. So if we go back and have a look at the um, actions, I think there's actions in through here. Yeah, we can either drop the weapon, so we can actually just drop it and leave it behind if we need just our infantry to, to go off on its own. Uh, we also then have things, for example, like... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's not showing it in through there. Anyway, the actual um, the machine gun itself is already now we can dismantle it at this point in time. It's already been assembled. So all of the machine guns, I think all of the machine guns have been assembled in this instance. And so they've got long, long range. These machine, these heavy machine guns have got very, very long range. Now, when I actually go to fire on this one, you can see through there, it's got like a, uh, when I right click, if I right click to actually fire on this particular one, I've got the heavy machine gun. It's 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 got the heavy machine gun along with the actual uh, rifles. They're going to be getting it at half range. There is a 43% a chance we're going to do some good damage, 2% chance we're killed in action, 7% of a half. If now, if I go to the machine gun itself, the machine gun itself doesn't have the half rating, but the but the infantry does. And so I get a slightly better chance with the, uh, with the infantry. But in reality, the machine gun itself is just going to do the job. So let's just fire with the machine gun. There we go, we've broken it already. And uh, did we get a reload? Yeah, we did get a reload. Okay, so we can now do it again. So this, this one here reloaded, which means that we have, of the 33%, now we've got another 50, actually this was a 50%. So we can do it again, we can fire again. So we've got an aiming. Now we've got a 56% chance now to actually go and get the, um, to go and get a, uh, a like a half squad kill, uh, which is actually quite cool. Um, so heavy machine gun again, it doesn't really matter whether we do use this with or without the infantry. Now we've got the kill, got a killed in action, they're gone completely. And we actually got a, did we get another reload? I don't think we did. No, we didn't with that one through there. Now we've got a medium machine gun through here, which has got a 33% chance to get that same sort of reload factor. It's pretty cool, isn't it? The way it does work. Now this one here, we've got a range of six for this green unit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It can't reach this one. So it's only the machine gun itself that can fire. And that's fine. Like 24%, not going to be great. Missed. Didn't get to do anything and it didn't get to reload. Now we've got another heavy machine gun in through here, which again has still been um, has still been assembled, so it's ready to go. So we can just, just go across, 
fire the machine gun. We've got a commander in this one, so we actually get a, like an extra bonus with the actual aiming. And so with the heavy machine gun through this side, in fact, if we do this one in through here, even the elite, the elite version now does actually add a lot to the actual results. So we might as well do this one through this side. We don't get much more for the... Um, for the, in fact, we get less for the getting the half squad, but we can break it. So let's just try to break this. So we'll do it with the, the full squad. And we did break it. That's good. So this is now broken, which means that it can't fire back. Now we've got this group in here doesn't actually have a machine gun. This is actually the one that has to then go and take the objective. So I can actually run that one forward. Uh, now that we've actually got this one broken, it can't do anything in through there. We've got a, still got a medium machine gun. In fact, if I if I, I'll just do this so we've actually got it in through here. It is now going to run across the bridge. It's now safe. This is the whole idea of this particular one. And then we can just take it in our advanced area. Um, now, again, it's a bit better there. So we'll go in with all of the all of the, the equipment. They actually held on. That means that they've actually did a morale check and survived it. This one's got two machine guns. And again, both machine guns... We still get a better result there with both machine guns firing, and uh, and and also with the with the um, infantry firing as well. No, they held on. They held on. We didn't get any reloads, so we're basically done. So we now just end our phase. This one won't be able to do anything because it's completely broken. Escape phase. It may run. Yep, it's running away. So it's been routed. And now we've got the advanced phase. We move this unit in, take the objective. There we go. 32 victory points. Well done. Job job over. Okay, in this scenario, we're dealing with mortars. So mortars are very similar to the machine guns. They do actually have a fairly high rate of a chance of being able to be resupplied. If they fire at units that are inside, the, uh, inside woods, they can actually hit the trees and actually do a lot of damage to infantry in the tree line. And so we've got like a, so we've got a commander in through here. So let's just get start over this side and just see how we go. So this is all, this has been assembled. Oh, malfunction. And we missed. Okay, that was a poor shot. So we now have a, have a malfunctioning uh, mortar, which means we've got a 17% chance of uh, getting it fixed each turn. So it probably won't really do too much. Um, We'll just stay where we are through here while we just do this, I guess. So we've got 58% chance in through either one of these. Actually, I'll just do this one. Um, try that one again. There's a 1% chance of it, of it sort of becoming a problem. There's another miss. I'll fire at this one. Oh, this one is actually not assembled. And so if we move and then assemble, we're not going to be able to fire anyway, but I'll still just assemble the mortar. So it's now been it's now been assembled, but we didn't move, so we can't actually fire it. Fifty-eight percent, and we've got a reload. Broken and weakened. Okay, that's cool. Let's go into here again, and we've got another reload. Miss. Try it again, and another one. Wow. Got a kill, broken and weakened. This is now, it's now worked out fairly well. Don't think we can do it into areas like that, but let's just go into here. Got another reload. Wow, this is incredible. Pinned. Got a miss in that in that instance, and we didn't get the extra reload. Wow, that was a lot of reloads. So let's go and now set this one up. And just keep on firing at these. We do actually have a smoke mortar here as well if we wanted to sort of block things off to allow us to then sort of uh, take the objective. But I don't think we're going to need to use that one so much. These are doing such a good job. And we missed that one as well. Now we've got mortars in here that have been sort of established. Now we, we have to pack them up to be able to then move. So I'm going to move them across. Um, so I've now packed it up. And we're now just going to move across into this location. So I'll run that one through to there. Uh, we will have to get more units. Now, what can we see? These have to have line of sight. So we can see from there across. I might move this group there. 
and then move this one in to take the objective. So let's go in across and um, pack this one up and move that one across into that position. We can still move into there, that's interesting. Now I probably should have waited to, for my actual action phase to actually do that one, but let's just do that anyway. This one here, I'm going to actually take this one and get the objective. So I'm going to drop this mortar because I can't take the mortar inside. So I'm just going to drop the mortar right where it is and just move that one up into that location. And just get re ready to then take the objective. All right, so um, we'll just open this one up. Now they get a fire phase. Now if there's any hidden units, they'll get to fire. They did a mist in through there. Nope, that's all that there was. Yep, they're routed, trying to move out of the way. Okay, we now have um, a phase where we can sort of start to move up a little bit. So I'm going to move this one up. So we can start to see things. This one is actually in a reasonable position. Uh, if we have a look at what we can see. Now I can see those from here, so I might move this one out as well. But in reality, we just want to take this location. So we'll move that one in. There we go, we've grabbed the location, and that should be it. Now in this particular exercise, we're going to be looking at how to capture uh, broken units, and all of these units are actually broken when we sort of hover over the uh, the American forces that are in, in through here. Uh, they're all broken units um, everywhere we go, back in through this side as well, so it's just a matter of really just rolling rolling them up. Now, where you see like a thick border through here, it means that there's no access point through the roof. So it's just a little self-contained building. These areas without the black mean that they can sort of move around. Now we have to get, we have to block all their avenues of escape um, so that they've got nowhere else to go, including down and up as well if there's stairs. And so if we go back and have another look at this one, we can sort of see that there's like, for example, a stair through there, but this one, this, this uh, unit at the top here has really got nowhere else to go. So it's in the top top area nowhere else to go. This one in through here has only got, it's got a stair underneath, so as long as we get a, a stair in there, they've got nowhere to escape to. Um, where else have we got? Now this one here has got like a, an area where there's a stair there, but it can still make its way through to this stair here. So we're going to need to have two units go in to actually secure that, that particular location. Uh, this one here is a bit unusual because we've got like a, a, a lot of avenues to go, uh, but we just have to make sure that they can't end up um, away. So if we take this area through here, it still can't get away from us. So we just need one unit to get into the stairs at that particular location. This one's just got a single stair that runs up through the actual location itself. So that's sort of what we're looking at through each of these. So in this case, in through this side, I'm just going to run it up to um, to this point here. Now the whole idea is we just we're not, we don't need to attack them. We just have to move up. So let's just move to that one to there. That now blocks that one off and essentially this one's got nowhere to go, so it's got no escape. Uh, this one through here, we can sort of move that one all the way up to this location. We can get it to run up to there. Now that should mean that this one's got nowhere else to go. There's no other staircase down, so we just have a bit of a look. Now we've got the extra movement because of the commander in through there. Yeah, it's really got nowhere else to go. So that's, that's, that's completely blocked. Um, we don't really need to do that one through there. This one here, can we get to there? This one's a bit more tricky because we've got, um, where's the stairs? I'll just rotate that one around. There's only one stair in the middle there, which is, um, yep. So all we have to do is just get onto that top of that stair and then we've got that one finished as well. So we move that one across. This is just a principle in, in how to basically sort of uh, make sure that they're captured. Uh, this one as well, we've got a stair there, but it can still actually move its way through. So we're going to have to put a, I'm going to have to put one there on this stair. It could still actually run that way. So this one is fine. We'll just walk, walk our way up. Again, we don't need to attack. And then we can actually just move this one up into there and that then blocks it off. We've got it surrounded. Um, this unit in here. There's only one stair down below, so we need to see to get to that second level. Okay, and we don't need to assault. We can just do whatever we want to do in here. This one here, only just we just need to go to the layer, the level below. 
I should, probably should have moved that one across somewhere else. We've got two units there. This one can't break away, so we just need to get across into there. I'll just move one of these units across, so I can just select just one of them. That's all we need to do here. Just run that one across to there. Now this one here can get through to the other side, but and there is a stair underneath there, so I'm going to move this one across into here. Do we have any other units that are close by? Not really. Yep, I can move one of these across. So we'll just move that one into there. That's then just going to stop it from moving out across the other other zone through that through that different uh, walkway through there. Just move that one across. It surrounds that one. And we've got a same sort of situation in here where we just need to make sure that we go underneath, oops, yeah, underneath that staircase through there. That's okay. And get up into this one as well. So that blocks that one off. And we're pretty much done, actually. I've got a couple of units here that I just don't need to move. So I am pretty sure that's all of them. Let's just uh, end our turn here. They're not going to fire because they're all broken. I hope I got all of them. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea of the principle of it anyway. Surrendered. Surrendered. So the escape phase, they've got nowhere to escape to. There we go. Get all of the victory points. 369. Awesome. And we're done. So the idea of this particular exercise is that we're going to be doing some uh, melee with the infantry against vehicles and also against other infantry as well. Uh, so I'm just going to literally, I'm going to still do the move and fire as per normal, but I'm going to, like if I try to sort of fire at this one through here, there is a 33% chance that we can do some damage, uh, but it's not really going to be effective. So let's just, just, let's just leave it where it is and um, let it have its, have its shot. Uh, it's the advanced phase that we're actually really looking for in this particular exercise. So I won't, I don't think I'll even do it this one through here. We do have a, we do have a 41% um, a chance to actually break this unit. I think I'll still just leave it. I'll leave, I'll leave the principles. That one there, we've got another attack. Uh, we've got a unit in through here, which is actually, you now we've got a, a staircase underneath. And we've got a whole group of different units back in through here. So I'm going to have to now move either there or there. Um, if I move to there, what have we got? I think we're better off under the staircase. Let's do that. So just move across. So we're going to be underneath, and then we can assault from up above. If we, if I had have moved into there, I think that the reaction fire, they would have actually got their, their, their different shot. This is another one where we've actually got like a group that is, um, that is below us. So let's go to above, because there is a staircase leading down there. So we can actually move this one up above. So we'll actually run this one. All right, um, that one, they're both in position. That's in position. Everyone's in position, basically, in this instance. So let's go and end our turn. They're going to get uh, some reaction fires. Now, they did break and, weak and weaken both of those, unfortunately. They missed those. Yep, so we're escaping. So unfortunately, we don't get to do that one there. But anyway, you, you get the idea. Right, now we have the assault phase. So we've got the Germans up above in this instance with our units down below. So I'm now just going to move up. And so there's a, a chance that we're going to have 58% chance that we'll actually get an ambush. And what that means is we'll get to actually shoot first. And otherwise it'll be simultaneous. So they can actually wipe each other out. But really there's a 98% um, chance in the close combat phase that we're going to do fairly well. So let's just walk up. So when the melee phase, which is next, takes place, we should get that one no problem. This one as well. We've now got one other one that we can now move back down. They've got an 8% chance of actually ambushing us in this instance. Actually, no, we've got an 8%. They've got a uh, they've got a 28%. So we'll walk on down. Move that one through, through there. So this is the advanced phase. Both of these. Now, against vehicles, we actually have to do a... A morale test to see if we we're actually brave enough to go and do this one. So you get the anti-tank bravery test. If I sort of if you look at that one through there, there's a 42% chance that we'll actually make this one. So it's a little bit risky. <laughs> and then the close combat, we've got a pretty good chance of actually sort of doing, then doing some damage against the actual tank. So let's walk this one in. Pinned, and they all got pinned because they all failed that test. Let's try this one. This one's also got the same sort of problem. 
and it got pinned, but it did actually make it to that location. I think we may have had two there. So one of them made it in uh, to actually try to assault that one that through there. We didn't do anything well, well enough there. This one through here, so we'll try this guy here with Sergeant Phillips and actually move that, these across. Now this has got a 72% chance because of the commander. So we've got, uh, we've got elite units, and so there's a 72% chance we're going to actually pass this test. There we go. One unit got got um, got pulled back, but both the commander and the uh, and the others actually sort of ended up there, getting into that particular advanced phase in through that side. I think that's all we had to do. Yep, everything has sort of now been set up. God, that was bad. <laughs> back in through there. Uh, we'll just move across into melee and see what actually happens. So we've now got a few different red red areas. We d we didn't get to do this one in through this side. So. We destroyed that one. We missed that one. Kill the inaction there. Burning wreck there. We, so we, we destroyed that one as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's the end of that phase. All right, now actually with this one here, we've actually got two other scenarios. One, how to attack. And so if we have a look at this one through here, it's a whole range of different sorts of things. So use the tactics you've learned to win these four battles. There's four different battles on the battlefield. You need to capture all four victory locations to win the battle. Um, this is one that I think I'll actually leave because I might actually do this one as a supplementary video. Both of these, actually. This one's a how to attack, and this one's a how to defend. All right, so now we're going to go into vehicles, which is like a whole other different aspect of the actual game itself. So we've got the boot camp for vehicles basics, back and through this side. In this particular episode, or the okay, in this exercise with vehicles, we've got our vehicle in through here. When I do select it, now I think we'll go through this when we start to do the combat. So I won't actually go through what's going on through here, but there's a lot to look at with vehicles, you know, there's a lot of different aspects to what they actually then get to do. There's different icons that are showing what they've got in through here as well. Uh, you can see through there, there's, um, I'll, I'll show you some of these and also you see how there's like a star shape that appears. These are all the different facings, which is quite nice the way it sort of does work. So this is for the actual hull of your vehicle. So the actual main, the main chassis of the vehicle will then point in whichever direction you want. So let's just go and, and point it in through here. Now when I right click, uh, with that one, it selected that particular area. In fact, uh, you can see through there, I can either, uh, well, I guess the movement ones, I can I can keep on moving after I get to there. So I can actually have the vehicle keep on moving or I can stop. And if I stop and stop, uh, move and stop into that location, it means it'll become stationary. So let's just go and do that. By the way, if I continue on, uh, you'll see that it, when it starts to run out, it'll some of these little icons will then start to disappear. Now, if I move to there, I have to keep running. So if I rotate to that one through there, if I do this one, I can actually move and stop to there if I, if I wanted to with no more uh, action points. Uh, let's just go back and, and do this one here though. So let's just go and move across and we will stop. So we'll move and stop. Now we've still got some movement. You can see by this little white outline through there, we've got the victory location established. Now other things we can do once we actually move, and this we can do this freely at any time. Let's just say that we're unsure about where the enemy is and we think that the enemy may be coming from the, uh, from the top. If I just right click somewhere in here, it won't really matter what I then go and do. And I'll just zoom in so you can sort of see this. But if I go and now click on the, uh, on the rotate turret, they'll then rotate their turret towards that direction. So that's sort of how the uh, rotate turret sort of works, which may protect it as well, because the turrets also have their own armor, armor uh, ratings as well, depending on, on the angle that they're actually sort of shot at. So anyway, that's basic movement. That's all we have to do. All right, in this one, we've got two very, very distant victory locations for, for our actual tanks. We've got a, uh, what have we got through here? This is a, Jag, a Jagdpanzer uh, V, and we also then have, and you can see it doesn't quite reach where it has to go. And then we've got another one over through here, which is even less. And this is a uh, Panzer VI, I think, yeah, Panzer VI. So we've got a uh, Panzer VI at the back through here. Now, one of the things you'll sort of notice is that when I sort of zoom in, they're all buttoned up. They, they, there's no no crew at all. Now, when they're moving along roads, if the if the commander is unbuttoned, they get an, a, uh, a bonus to their movement. And also you'll sort of see with these as well, like it, it, you'll do this one first. If we just go and right click on this one and then go and click on, on here, open the hatch or click on this one down through there, the commander will now appear on the actual, on the vehicle itself. And we can now move it across and we now have access along the road to this particular location. And so everything is still sort of active. There's not, not a problem through there. It just means that he can now move there. He runs out of, out of puff right there, but he does get to the actual victory location. So we'll now move him across. So unbuttoned, they get basically double the movement along the roads. 
uh, through there. So if they're moving along roads, unbutton, and you can see the little black icon through there. He's ready to go. So he's uh, keeping on moving back and through there, and we get that victory location. Now this one in through here, uh, if we have a look at this one through this side, uh, you'll notice that they've got like a smoke launcher. Uh, they've got the um, the engine can be either on or off in this instance. If we go back and have a look at the other one, by the way, you can see that the engine is running now. Uh, it's got smoke coming back out of it. And so at the moment, this engine is off. Let's go and actually have the commander appear. So we'll open or, open or close the hatch. So I'll open the hatch. There's our commander. So he's now sort of got his got this one out. Um, one thing that we should now see is we no longer have the smoke. We can't actually use the smoke launcher anymore from this particular vehicle while he is exposed. He has to be underneath and, and buttoned up to be able to then use the smoke, smoke handler. And he can also then move into this location. So again, they can move along the roads at double the distance by doing this. So we'll move across. Off he goes. That's pretty much it for this one. <laughs> pretty simple. But that's just showing a, a bit of the differences, a bit of the nuance with uh, using crews in the actual tanks themselves. And we'll end our turn there. All right, in this exercise, we've got like a whole lot of different types of vehicles with different sorts of objectives that we have to try to get into. Now, vehicles themselves can't actually capture locations unless they've actually got an access point. For example, this has got like a vehicle access point into it. Uh, these, this one doesn't, that one does in through there. So we can sort of see that there is one in through that side. Uh, this one, does in through there by the looks of things if i just rotate that one around yes it does so we actually do have access points back into that location there you can see through with the different driveways so there that's the sort of considerations we have we then also then have our um, actual forces actually i'll just rotate that back around uh and i think i'll go through now this everything to do with vehicles. So let's actually just talk about that now. So we'll do a bit of a diversion away from this particular one and uh, and then just go through what the vehicle card is talking about. And so the best way to do that one is, is again, just through the uh, through here with the actual help. And so when we have a look at a card, let's just open up, actually before we do that one, let's actually have this one open so we can sort of see the difference. This is a uh, camp wagon, so a Panzer three, a three N. Uh, and if we just go across to the question to this one through this side, and so you can see there, it's got like the front turret armor, so the very very front. In fact, I'll I'll zoom right in, <laughs> so we can sort of talk a little bit about it. Uh, so this is the uh, the Panzer three back in through this side, and uh, we can have a bit of a look at the at what's going on with this one here. Question mark. Right. So front turret armor. So the front turret armor is this little bit in through this side. The side turret armor is the stuff from from the side. So you can see there, ours, we've got like a lot of armor at the, from the front, reasonable armor from the side, and then the rear turret armor is if we get shot from the behind, which is not very strong, and through this particular side and through here. Uh, then we've got the actual hull armor. So the front hull armor is in through the front through there. Again, it's pretty, pretty strong. Uh, the actual side is worse than the turret. So the side is actually only got like four armor. And we've only got like two and a half armor from the for if we get shot from the rear. So being shot from the rear is something we've got to be very, very careful of. The facings are very important with um, with all of your vehicles, really, but in particularly with tanks. Uh, and so we've got those. Uh, then we've got certain things, for example, like the question mark will indicate. I don't know if it'll show that in there. There we go. This is now sort of so the unit is unknown to the enemy. So there's the question mark. Same as what we sort of had with the infantry. Uh, if we just go back up. The name, so we've got the name in through there. We've got the uh, the different sorts of machine guns. So we've got like a uh, turret machine gun in through there. And we also have a bow, a bow machine gun in through there as well. So we've got two different sorts of machine guns in through that side. Uh, we've got ourselves a 75 millimeter short uh, cannon in the front there. You can sort of see the actual short cannon. Uh, that's just showing through there with a 1% chance of it malfunctioning. Uh, what else do we have in through this side? I'll just go through it bit by bit. This is a smoke dispenser. It has a 28% chance to deploy smoke in the hex. So we've got a 58% chance. We've got a good chance to actually deploy, to, to actually sort of fire smoke and have it deploy, it was, which will give us a bit of uh, protection. Um, we've got uh, the, uh, what is it in through this side? We've got the, um, yeah, this is the movement points, the 13, sorry, back over through that side. Rider capacity, we can actually have up to four different troops riding with us. We've got nothing on our particular vehicle. So uh, in this case, in the, in the example, they've got like a half squad riding with them. This is a 17% uh, chance for a quick gun reload. We've got a 17% um, chance in through there as well. 
41% uh, chance smoke runs out after next smoke shot. So we've got a 27% chance that it's going to run out. So that's actually sort of like a bit of a negative. So the, the lower that number, the better. Uh, so that's that particular card. There's so much to see in these cards, isn't there, really? Uh, if there was a rear machine gun, it would then sort of show it up through there. The uh, hatch opens, uh, can be used on roads. So ours is actually open in this instance. We can see the commander is actually up there. We can actually then go and close it this time. So we don't actually have the indicator showing the, the actual person. We now have the hatch to be closed, but we'll keep it open. Um, and this is the size of the target, like it's a medium target through here. If we've got like a big green double what one, it's a huge target. So this is not that in that, in that case. Uh, what else have we got here? The chance for the, the gun to jam. Um, 27% chance that uh, armor piercing runs out after the next armor piercing shot. So ours is a 27% chance, which is actually pretty high, really, which is sort of a bit, bit, bit scary, a bit like the, uh, a bit like the smoke as well. Uh, back in through here, we've got the anti-air machine gun, and the gun uh, cannot be used when the hatch is closed. So if there is actually any problem with these, with the hatches, which there won't be, we would have to show, have them sort of show up in through there. And the dispenser, yeah, also cannot be used when the hatch is closed in this instance. Uh, and the anti-air machine gun, anti-air machine gun cannot fire it to the front facing in this particular instance. So we've got like a machine gun at the back there, I think. We've got a, tu a, um, a turret machine gun at the front and we've got an anti-aircraft machine gun which can't fire to the front. We don't have any of those indicators on this particular vehicle. But that's there's a lot to see in the card. Uh, that's the button, a run button. We've got the smoke launcher in through there and we actually have the engine off at this point in time. Now, a few other little things. So that's actually with the vehicles themselves. Uh, there's all sorts of different types of vehicles. So we, if we have a look at this one here, this is like a, a tank. If we go across to the um, to the vehicle, you can sort of see that this one has got 24 movement. It's got four soldiers inside it, so like a full squad. Um, it can tow as well. This one, it didn't show that in the other one in through that side. We've just got a regular squad riding inside it. Just the engine on or off, basically, and can't be seen by the, by the, uh, by the enemy. What other sorts of vehicles have we got along the road here? Uh, this one here is a half track, and so this is a um, a uh, camp wagon uh, 250. Uh, you can see there, this one does actually show the the anti air machine gun. Can't be fired from the front, but can be fired from the back. Um, although it is it does look like it's firing to the, towards the front, but anyway, it can't be fired to the back. Uh, the turret machine gun is the main gun that it has anyway, and this one's got like sort of a lot more firepower. Uh, this is a small target in through this instance, so it's it's a bit bit harder to sort of hit. I think the truck will be a medium target, I believe. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, that's medium. That's medium as well. All right, then we have uh, further along the road, we've got another vehicle. This is a scout car, again, a small target. Um, it's got a 20 millimeter long cannon on the on the front of it. So just a 20 millimeter um, unbuttoned at this point in time, 33, so a lot of movement with this particular vehicle. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, with this one here, you can see we, if we go this way, we can get to that location with the tank, um, but we have to go around the, around the car, around the, around the truck, so the truck can get to there. We may be able to go close, so they just can't get past other vehicles. This one here, we'll have to then go around that other one, which we don't want. We want to keep them on the roads as much as possible. This one can get all the way around to here. Let's Let's do this one. This one's going to have to go and take this location because it's got, it's got this has got wheels. And so wheeled units can't break through here. Like they can't get through these at all. So we can't get through a hedge. Definitely can't get through a wall either. So this is actually, t this is um, impossible for these to break through. So let's just move this one around towards its objective. We'll keep the engine running as it goes through. Uh, the half track has, uh, hasn't got any actual units on board, so all it can do is actually move. But this one actually ultimately can get through the hedges. So it's got like a, a track and wheels. So long as it's got the half track, we're okay to get through hedges. We just can't get through into walls, as you can sort of see through there. So we'll move that one up, keep that one running. So we wanna move, whatever can move furthest along the road, we just do that. Now these guys have got like a full squad, like a regular squad riding inside it. It can actually have a lot more in, inside it as well. And so this one here, I can only really move it to into that, that location. Let's just keep the engine running. That way we get a bit of a bonus for the next move phase. And the full track, 
then through here with the actual tank can break through this eventually. So we want to move this one across now into this location and get it. Again, they can't move past uh, trees, so they have to move along roads or you know in between the actual trees itself. So we'll move that one across. So it's avoiding the uh, ups and downs and sort of moving it in there, but it's a bit slower than the actual other vehicles. Okay, let's end our turn here. So half tracks can get through here. So if we go and do this one, you can see they can just smash straight through and then they can go into the victory location. Now, as I hover over this building, it doesn't matter where I go in the building, it's the victory location. You can see on the, on the right hand side, it's sort of within sort of show me that. And so I can just move in, job done. So let's just go across. We might as well stop it, move and stop. Straight through the hedge, not a problem at all. Half track done. That one's been that one's been secured. Let's go to this one now and uh, go and move this one along. You can see that it has to avoid any sort of obstacle at all. It really can't handle anything e easily be simply because of the wheels, but it can go an awfully long distance. Not a problem. Again, this is another one showing us on the right hand side here. That this is the objective. Anywhere of these will actually then do. Let's go and, and roll that one in and stop. That one's been secured. All right, job done there. Um, now the other two probably won't be able to make it in this turn. The truck can go 24, so it's just gonna travel along the road. It can get close to this location, but we need to, this one we can't, we've got no access in with vehicles, so we have to go in with infantry. So we'll just move this one across into there, keep the engine running. Turning on or off the engine uses up movement. This one through here. I want to move, I want to get this one into this location into here. So we need to actually break in. I might just reduce this one so we can sort of see what's inside here. Either one of these locations, as you can see on the right hand side, there is a victory point. Uh, we're not going to get into that one immediately. Uh, now, if we go to there, it's then going to take us a little bit of extra. Like we got, if we move to that one through there, you can see it's it actually takes a lot of movement to move these up. So if I move into that location through there and keep the engine running, it's a zero there as well. I um, don't know why it's a zero there and a zero there, but I might as well keep it running up to here rather than going up. The, the, like we've got five and then we've got basically nothing left over after that one. So it's a lot to actually move a tank up a, up a slope. So let's just move it into that location. I think this is the way we're supposed to do it. I don't think we're supposed to leave it here. That's then got another five and um and then sort of around so at least we don't have to worry we just got to turn it now and then move it across through that wall and in all right we'll end our phase there yeah and so this one now we can actually move in we can move into the locations either one either location let's just move into this one in here again full tracks the full tracks can get through the the rock wall uh half track wouldn't be able to do this so let's go and move in and stop in she goes bang straight over <laughs> not a problem and we've now taken this location and now we just have to take this next location now we can't drive into this location but we can actually stop and then unload and so if we come across into this one we can either the, th the different things we've got a, a, um, a move and stop we've got a, a move and keep the engine running or we've got a move and unload and so we're going to st a move stop and unload that's when we're going to actually then go and do and so we've now got a, an infantry group that now unloads They've got no movement when they come off the vehicle itself. They're just a regular squad. And so they've actually considered to have been moved at this point in time. Uh, we just need to move into that location there, which we can then do in our advance phase. And so this is the last thing we have to do. We've now got this unit. If I, I can't move the truck, but I can move this one here. So you can see when I actually go and select the regular unit, bang, in we go. They move in, in the advance phase, job done. Okay, in this exercise, we've got to try to destroy all the various tanks that are in through this side uh, with our tanks up the top through here. Uh, we can see that we've got certain sorts of things where we've got like the, um, the turret is then pointing the right direction for this particular tank in through that side. We don't actually have to do that one through there. There's a whole range of different things we actually have with the tanks. Again, we sort of had a look at the anti-aircraft, the turret, the, the, bow, the bow guns and things like this as well. Uh, we also can chop, chop and change, like I can actually change the facing. So I can actually rotate this one around and then have this one that I can then fire at. So by all means, just sort of swivel them back and forwards. It's, you know, just get a bit of a feel. It may be that this one, we're gonna get like a bit more of a rear type shot. Hang on, let's have a bit of a look at that one. 
might just go back and sort of aim at that one back through there. So we've got a 72% uh, chance of destroying this particular one. Now, if we move, we actually lose a lot of, uh, like by not moving, by having our shot and not moving, we've got higher accuracy. And so we've got a, uh, and you can see through here, if I just do a right click on that one through there, we've got different things we can do through this side. So we can either button back up, which is then gonna reduce our aiming. In fact, let's just have a look at that one. If we button up and then try to do it, see how it's gone to back down to 57%. So we don't wanna be doing that one. We do wanna be unbuttoned. Again, it doesn't cost any action points to do that. So it does give us a better chance. And so it's a 70% chance of aiming, 1% chance of, it, of, it, uh, of the gun jamming, and a 17% chance of a quick reload, which means we get a second shot. So uh, we'd love to get that one if we, could, if we can do it. Uh, then we've got a 72% chance of actually of killing this one off. And really what we're going to be using through this one is we've got different sorts. We can actually fire smoke at the, at the target, which is not going to kill it. <laughs> we've got high explosive in through here. And you can see through here with the high explosive, we still actually have like a 72% chance of actually uh, of, of actually hitting it, but to destroy it, right, we're going to be either hitting the back of the turret or the back of the uh, back of the hull, either one of those two, which has only got three armor, and so we've got a good chance of actually killing it, not with a um, high explosive, we would need to go to the next one down, which is the actual armor piercing, and so the armor piercing is going to do the damage here, so we're going to go and select the, select the bottom one, this will be much better against, for example, infantry, so we're just going to go and click on that one through there, bang, and and gone, hull, hull destroyed, and we then have that one destroyed in through there. Now, we didn't get a reload. You can see there, hull hit, and it's now become a wreck. Uh, this one as well, we've now got this one here where we can actually go and have a bit of a look at this one through this side. We're actually now hitting the side of this one with this particular this, this particular attack. So again, we've got the same sort of deal in through this side. Let's just go across and... Um, and fire at this one. So if we uh, fire the armor piercing, we've got a 95% chance. Now the difference here is we see how there's a wall. It's got good cover. It's actually inside, like it's like it's hull down. The only chance we actually have of actually hitting this thing is to hit the hull, sorry, to hit the turret. And so if we can chance to destroy the, the turret side armor is gonna be a 95% chance. But if we hit the, hit the wall of the hull, essentially it's, it's, there's no chance of actually getting it in, through there so this is hull down so let's just go across and, and try this one and we missed we hit the uh we, we hit the the actual hull of it meaning that we hit the rock the rock wall instead so that's sort of how that one works again really really useful to know uh now we've got a couple of situations in here where we've got like we can fire at either one of these we've got a better chance against that one through there um both 95% chances. Let's have a look at this one through this side. Now, see how we don't have any chance here? We're actually facing the opposite direction. We don't want to change the facing of the truck, of the tank, because that's then moving the tank. So what we want to do is just rotate the turret around. So let's just, just go and rotate the turret and see what chances we actually have to now hit, hit this one here. So we've got a good chance in through here, actually, but there's no, no way for it to use the um, this hedge to protect itself. It's got a 72% chance to actually hit it and then a 95% chance to do damage. This one here is also a 95. So the same, it's got less chance to actually hit it though uh, through the actual there. So 58% chance essentially. So let's just go back and have a look at this one. This one is a 58 and 95, 68, that's 68. They're basically the same now, now that we've sort of rotated that one around. Let's just try this one in through here. Armor piercing. There we go, we got it, we destroyed it. And then this one through here, where it doesn't have the protections. Bang. And we've got a gun reload, which means we've got a chance to actually hit this one. But we're now hitting the front turret armor. So you can sort of see through there that we're the, it's the chance to destroy. The front uh, turret armor is what is going to be attacked. And this has got a lot of armor. We can't hit the hull because it's hull down in behind the, the rock wall. Uh, let's go and do it. And we missed again. We hit the wall, actually, in that case. We missed the first one and we hit the wall with that one through there. That's it. In this instance, we now have to move the tank so you can sort of see the difference. Now, we've got one in through here that is still got the engine running. And you can see there, with the engine running, it's actually, <laughs> you can see it's quite uh, quite difficult to actually get the shot, to get the hit back in through this side. So we'll start with this one here, I think. Uh, if we can get the shot, we've got a 95% chance as long as it gets over the wall. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll actually just go and um, and uh, stop the engine 
because the engine is the thing that's actually sort of taking the um, taking up most of the actual uh, problems for us for, for, to actually get this particular shot. So let's just go across and uh, with that particular one, we'll just go back and turn the engine off. So the engine has now been turned off. So there it is. And now when we look at it, we've now got an 83% chance. That's massive. That's a massive, massive hit chance. A 58% chance in through there. I should have had a look at the others while we were doing this one. That's a 72% chance with a really good shot at a chance of destroying it. It may be best. I might just leave that one until the very end and just sort of see how we go. Now this one in through here, if we have a quick look to see where can we actually go, we can actually spot both of those units from up in here. I'm thinking that this might be the better location for us. Actually might even be better to get even closer down in through here, I guess. If we move, we're moving. Like it doesn't matter, no matter how far we move, but we do want to be trying to stop if we can. So let's go and see if we can get in behind a little bit. So we'll go, we'll go back to this side. So we, we can actually get, I don't see that one. I need the height to be able to see that one. So if I go to there, that will give me a, at least a chance to get in behind the other tanks. Okay, so let's move this one across into that location. And uh, again, it's not really going to matter which facing we actually have because we can still just uh, turn the turret. Let's just go and stop. So move and stop. There we are. So now we've got the um, engine off. Oh, did I turn it back on again? I think I turned it back on again. I've got no chance at all of actually hitting these. Well, that was a big problem. Yeah, the engine is still actually now on. <laughs> so there's no, there's no, no chance of actually hitting these at all. Um, Anyway, it shows the exercise. It shows what's going on here. Let's go and set this one up. Let's do this one as an exercise. Same sort of deal. Just move this one across into this location here. Again, I'm assuming that being a bit higher up, let's just go and turn the engine off again. So we should have the engine off anyway. Yeah, when we go and click on that one, we don't actually, we've got the movement problem with it. So 17%. 17% in through there as well. This one is a 28%, but good chance we're going to miss everything else in through there. Let's just go this way. Oh, we actually got it. That was very, very lucky. The crew survived, uh, but we did actually hit it. And so that was just a lucky, lucky shot. Now we do actually have even more things we can do through here. We ha we've got the different machine guns and things that we can now fire from here. We've got our anti-aircraft machine gun, the turret machine gun, and the, and the bow machine gun, or all of them. So let's just do that. There we go. They uh, they did a morale check and they were fine. <laughs> so they're okay. Uh, don't know if it'll tell us that. No, it won't say that in through there. And so really it's this one here is going to be, give our, it'd be our best bet. Now we don't want to, actually you can move down to there. Actually, I've better just double check what can be seen, what can be seen where. So we can actually see it from here. So we can still actually see the back of this one from down at this location here. So let's go and send it one down. Move and stop. And again, only 17% chance of actually hitting this one. We missed. So even though we stopped, it still it still was uh, not good. Okay, that's pretty much that one done. So very, very different victory victory points. Now we're in the next phase. We're inside the, uh, inside the um, like it's basically the American turn inside the German phases to have our fire phase. Now we've technically stopped everywhere except for this one in through here. And so if we have, if we fire at this one, we're getting low results because I turned the engine back on. And so that was a bit of a problem in through there. 17% um, and I can't actually turn the engine off during this fire phase. It's not a movement phase. So I'm sort of stuck with this one here. Come on, get the kill. Get a lucky shot again. Nope, you missed. This one here though goes to 72% because the engine is off. And um, again, we've got the side turret. I love how it sort of shows you down through the bottom there as well as to what's actually going on. There we go, destroyed. That's now a wreck. Uh, do we get a good shot here, I wonder? Yeah, we know we still get the um, still get the problem, but it's an 83% chance. Hmm. What's this one? This is the same. I'll just take this one. I oh, probably should have done that one there. God, this is a good game. 
Now we got the victory points in the end, really, um, but not not during our movement phase, only during the enemy's phase. In this instance, we're actually further behind now than what we were before. So we can only really move up to the edges to, um, and we're going to have to then sort of stop. So if we have a quick look to see what could be spotted. So we can actually go anywhere along the front here is fine. Anywhere along there is fine as well. So I can actually sort of stop maybe there with this one here. But it's as far as I can get with this. Oh, no, that's the only place I can get. those. They can't be seen by the enemy. So we'll move up. We have to keep running now because we've, we've got no way of actually stopping the, the tanks. And so again, we can now sort of see we've got this 0%, 0%. We're just not going to have any chance really of getting through here. Now we do get a gun reload. Let's just go for it again. Okay, that was not going to happen. Again, back in through this side. It's just not going to happen through here with all of these, this ridge line that we happen to be behind. I don't even think we can get lucky with this. Yeah, we have to hit this ridge line to be able to do any of this stuff. And then we have to rotate the turret around in here. And so now the, the difference is we... we um, haven't been able to turn these off at all. So when we go to the next firing phase for the enemy uh, in, during their turn, uh, we're not going to. It's still not going to be. We're still going to be really, really poor. The one thing we do actually have this time though is we actually now have an actual gun. Uh, so we've got a uh, 37 millimeter anti-tank gun, and so these are these are basically sort of sitting where they are. We can rotate these around. Now we've got a, a, a high high hit chance, but really it's it's like likely to hit the wall. 58 percent chance in through there. Let's go and hit this one from the rear. So rotate that one around. It's only 2% chance to hit with an 84% chance to actually get the kill. So let's go and do that. Again, the high explosive, only 5%. Bang, got it. And we've got a reload, which is great for us. So we can now go for here. It's incredible the difference between like um, moving and stopping, um, moving and not stopping, and doing all these different things. You can sort of see there it's... Um, the interesting thing about this aspect is that the last time we actually, even though we moved, we still got to stop. And then when it was the enemy's turn, we were able to then sort of fire back fairly effectively. Not this time. So that's all we could do. That time we actually missed that one. So that's actually, that's been immobilized, uh, that particular tank. Uh, let's just move forward. Now it's the enemy's turn to uh, do their, their move and fire phase, which they won't, of course, do anything. This is the interesting thing now for us. So with our units, they're all actually technically still moving. We can't turn the engine off and we've still got the 0%, actually 28% in this instance now. So we've, we've still got the motor running, but we're not moving as such. And so it's uh, very, very poor results again. So we miss. I'll still go with, it's a 17, that's an 8%, it's a 28. Um, uh, let's go for it. Hit the wall again. <laughs> all right, we go 17%. At least it's better, but these are all still got the actual movement. So 8% um, there because of the because of the engine movement. So you can sort of see through there, firing while engine is on, extremely poor aiming. Uh, back in through there, small target as well. Woods, uh, we've got poor cover in the woods as well. No, we weren't even, weren't even lucky. In this case here, we will actually know we've got an 83% chance with a 71% chance to destroy it. Got it. All right, and that's all we can do. Now, the last one as well, I think I might do those two scenarios from the infantry plus this scenario from the, like showing hidden units for the, for the, uh, um, for the armor as a separate video. So I'll still do them all together in one video. Uh, they're just little scenarios. They're quite cool, actually. It sort of does give you a, a real good feel for how dangerous infantry can be to your forces if you're not very, very careful. And uh, particularly if you've got like Panzer Shreks or Bazookas. Uh, so we'll sort of see that when we play this one out. But that will be in the next one. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a bit of a, an idea of the scope as well as if you are playing the game. All the little nuances that you can actually sort of then uh, use for your advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, again, special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Please consider liking and subscribing if you do like this sort of content. And um, buy a shirt. <laughs>
buy merch, buy merch. There's a, there's links in the description. Join me on Discord. Uh, join me on Twitch for live streams. And um, I do a weekly chat uh, session as well uh, where I sort of go through sort of gaming news of the week uh, every single week on uh, Mondays for the rest of the world and Tuesdays for me. It's very, very early on a Tuesday morning for me. But um, anyway, guys, uh, yeah, thanks for um, for watching and uh, thanks for, for staying around for this long in. <laughs> but I think it's I think this is valuable. This is a valuable, valuable um, uh, video because it really does sort of uh, get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of what this game actually, the scope of what this game has to offer. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.